Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to talk about cross products of vectors. Now before we actually jump into cross products, I want to review how to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix and then how to find determinants of or evaluating a determinant of a 3 by 3 using uh, minors because we're using those skills today. So remember when we have a 2 by 2 matrix, we simply multiply the diagonals a times d and we subtract b times c so on this one we're going to take 2 times 8 and we're going to subtract the product of negative 4 times 12 so that's going to give us 16 double negative we'll be adding 12 so that'll just give us 28 and that's how we find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix now what about expansion by minors? If you remember, expansion by minors is very simple. It's just A minus B plus C, where these, this first position, first column, first um, row is A, B, and C. So I'm gonna plug in a one, uh, negative two for B, and then for C, I'm gonna plug in three. Now, what do I multiply these? I multiply these by the two by two matrix. So for A, I take out this row, this column, and I evaluate this two by two matrix. So I'm gonna multiply these two. So 10 minus a negative 18. So that's gonna be very simply, um, what's that, 28? because I'm gonna end up adding those. Okay, then for the second matrix, let's go up and erase these. For the second matrix, I take out the middle row, the middle column. So remember, I take out this row and this column and I evaluate this two by two matrix. So I have a double negative here in front of my two. So I have a plus two times the matrix, what's that, negative eight minus a negative six. So I'm gonna end up adding six to negative eight. So that's a negative two. So that's gonna give me two times a negative two. And I'll bring down my 28. And then I'm gonna add the three by three matrix from the C column. So let's take out that last row in that last column. So as you remember, we're going to take out this row and this column, and that's going to give me 12 minus a negative 5. So that's going to give us 17. So 3 times 17. So once we evaluate all that, that's going to give us 28 minus 4. And then three times 17 is what, 51? So plus 51. And so that's 24 plus 51. And that's gonna give us 75. So the determinant of that three by three matrix is 75. And we used expansion by minors, which is A minus B plus C with expanding the little minor two by two. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes and review those so that as we get through the lesson, we've got that fresh in our mind. Okay, there are two ways we can multiply vectors. We can use dot products, which we've already discussed, and then we can use cross products. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today, is multiplying two vectors using cross products. Remember, dot products produce a value that's constant, and that's a scalar that we get. Versus a cross product, when we multiply vectors, it produces another vector. So this is very important. When you multiply two with a dot product, you get a scalar constant, but when you multiply cross products, you actually get a result that is a vector. So what's the reason you have or why do we have cross products? Well, there are a lot of applications in space and they involve physics and, and engineering, which my son's actually doing that. And we've talked a lot about this this, this week. Um, 
and we're, of course we're going to yield a vector so cross product is that multiplication and is calculated using a standard unit vector form okay so the cross products can only be calculated with vectors in three dimensions. So if you have just a two-dimensional vector, you cannot use a cross product. While the dot product gives us a scalar, the cross product gives us a result that's a vector. And the vectors we get from cross products are very interesting. They are perpendicular, which in vectors we say orthogonal. They're orthogonal to the original two vectors that you were given. So let's say we have a vector. I'm just going to draw an X, Y, and a Z coordinate in space. So let's say we have a vector going this way. We have another vector going that way in three dimensions. Well, this the vector we get, the resulting vector, is perpendicular to both of the vectors that result. It's their perpendicular to both, which is kind of interesting that it's the result is perpendicular. Okay, so let's talk about how do we actually calculate with cross products. Okay, so we're going to start with the product of two vectors. So this is vector one and vector two, u and v. We're going to take the coordinates in three dimensions for the first vector and line them up on the second row. So on the first row, we're going to have an I, a J, and a K, which is our linear combination. So I, J, and K is that standard unit vector, where K is the third dimension. We write in the U coordinates, then we write in the V coordinates. And then what we do is we expand by minors using I, J, and K as our A, B, and our C. So we're going to expand the 2 by 2 vector with i minus the 2 by 2 vector with j plus the 2 by 2 vector with k to get a resulting vector. So this 2 by 2 matrix, which is just the determinant of this one, is going to be the coefficient for i. This 2 by 2, that's your coefficient to j plus this little 2 by 2 matrix is the coefficient to k, and that's how you figure it out. So let's try one, okay? We're going to take V times W. So we're going to first start by setting up the 3 by 3 matrix. So I, J, and K always line up on the first row. Then since V is the first one, we're going to list V first. So 2, 1, 3, and then W, 1, 3, and 2. Now let's expand by minors. So we're going to take out row and column. So I'm going to multiply 1 times 2. So 2 minus 3 by 3 times 3, which is 9. And that's the coefficient to the I coordinate. Minus, let's take out the center column and the top row. So 4 when I'm multiplying 2 times 2, minus 3 times 1, 3, and that's the coefficient to j. Plus, the coefficient to k will be taking out, when we take out this row and this column, 6 minus 1, and that is the coefficient to k. Now let's simplify. So that's negative 7i minus 1j, I'm not going to write the 1, I'm just going to put a j, plus 5k, whoops, plus 5k, and there is my resulting vector right here, and it's written in standard uh, unit form with i, j, k, or I call that a linear combination, and there is the answer. Now, Let's take the product and we're going to reverse it. We're going to take the cross product of W times V. 
So I want to show you what's going to happen when we change the order of the product. I, J, K still remains the first row. Now, since we're going to multiply W times VW now goes in this row, and V goes in the bottom row, 2, 1, 3. So let's expand this. The coefficient to I will be 9 minus 2, and that's the coefficient to I, minus the coefficient to J, and that will be taking out this row and this column. So 3 minus 2 times 2 is 4, plus the coefficient to K, which will be 1 minus 6, and so this factor would be 7i minus a negative 1, so plus 1j, uh, minus 5k. So that is not the same vector we just got. Let's compare that to the previous answer. The previous answer we got negative 7i minus j plus k. So what's the difference between these two vectors? The difference is simply the, their opposite signs. So it is the same vector but in the opposite direction because the signs are opposite. So yes, it does matter the order because it changes the signs of the vector. So order does matter. So notice that V the vector V times W is not the same as W times V. So cross products are not commutative. But we do see that they're just the opposite signs, which means you will have a vector going, I'm going to draw this one in red. Let's say you have a vector going this way. Well, the cross product, if you change the order, will be a vector going that way. They're in opposite directions. Okay, so let's take vector V times itself. Let's run through this one more time. So we're using the same two vectors. So I'm going to take V times V, and I'm going to write I, J, K in the top row. And then V is 2, 1, 3 times itself, 2, 1, 3. So the coefficient to I will be 3. minus 3 for i, minus the coefficient for j will be 6 minus hmm, 6 j plus for k, take out this row and this column, and that's 2 minus 2, and that's times k. So what do you notice is happening here? 0i minus 0j plus 0k. So you end up with just 0. Hmm. So what's happening here? I just showed you a property. Okay. So any vector, this, this property, number 5, any vector times itself and cross products gives us 0. We just saw that property, okay? V, U, so the first property up here, vector U times vector V is equal to negative V times U. That's what I just showed you when we change the order that we multiply. You just get the opposite sign vector, meaning they're just going in opposite directions. When you multiply a vector and cross products times itself, you get zero. And then what about when you have vector cross product times a sum? You can basically distribute this in and do the cross product of the first plus the cross product of the second to get the same answer, or you can add the two vectors and then do the cross product. This is first side is actually faster because you're adding two vectors and then doing one cross product rather than two cross products and adding those two vectors. Now remember, when you 
take the cross product of two vectors, you end up with a vector. So this is going to be a vector plus another vector. So the answer is a vector. Okay, number three, when you take the cross product times a constant C, you can find the cross product and then multiply by the constant or you can take the constant times one of the two vectors, either U or V, and you will get the same answer. Um, when you take a vector and you multiply it times zero, that's the same as zero times that vector, which is always zero. So zero times the vector is zero. It's just like multiplying. And then this last one, if you have, um, this is called a triple scalar and you can regroup them. And we're gonna talk about triple scalar in a moment, but it's the same as the cross product times another vector. And this is a special thing we're gonna look at in a second. Okay, and just FYI, this actually gives us a constant solution when we have a triple scalar. So that's gonna give us a constant because we're taking a vector's cross product, which gives us a vector, and then we're doing the dot product with another vector, which gives us a constant solution. Okay, that's where we're gonna stop on just the, the basics of cross products and those properties.